you might be thinking about moving to Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk everything you need to know about moving here and living in Glen Ridge. What it's like, what's here, are there good restaurants, are there good shops, what about the schools? Especially, we'll get into real estate so you know the numbers. Let's jump into the video and get to know more about Glen Ridge. Hey, if this is your first visit to the channel and you're looking to learn all about the suburbs of New York City, then subscribe below and tap the notification bell so you can be the first to hear about the current market here in New Jersey and even sometimes New York City. Hi, I'm Jeff Massey, your local realtor, and I get calls every day from people just like you who are thinking about moving to one of New York City's amazing suburbs. The team and I, we love it. So whether you're moving in seven days or seven months, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email so we can help you make an easy, stress-free purchase in the New York City area. And as you know, today we are here in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Now, Glen Ridge is a very small community located between Bloomfield and Montclair. The main artery of the town is Ridgewood Avenue, and Bloomfield Avenue cuts up the middle going towards Montclair. Now, the town itself is only about 7,700 people, and it's roughly the size of Hoboken. It's about one and a quarter square miles, so very small place. The homes here are beautiful. We'll talk about those a little later. But right now I'm standing in the Glen by the brook and you can see this beautiful old brownstone bridge. The trains go underneath it. There's another archway over there, which we'll see later. We'll talk about trains later as well. There's this beautiful river and pedestrian bridge. And then you have the nice gazebo in the middle. This is just one small little park in the town. And we're gonna jump around today. Like I said before, we're gonna show you the schools. There's one behind me with some kids playing. And we're gonna talk a little bit about restaurants, but to be honest, there's not a whole lot of restaurants and commercial in Glen Ridge. You've got some in Bloomfield and a lot more in Montclair. And if you haven't seen our Montclair video, you can go back and check that out because Montclair has tons of stuff going on in terms of restaurants, shops, and so on. But again, that's just one like 10 minute walk up the road depending on where you're located and it's really only like a quarter of a mile or so so you have the kind of beauty and quaintness of a small town and you still have access to those really nice amenities in Montclair and Bloomfield and if you go a little further even you have even more options so without further ado let's keep going and check out Glenridge if I haven't mentioned it before Glenridge is located in Essex County and it was actually incorporated in 1895. Now here's the interesting thing. Before that it was actually part of a larger territory that included places like Montclair and Bloomfield. It was this big piece of territory and you know as things happen you've heard it many times in the channel just like in Chatham and in Morristown and other places like that. You know political divisions start to arise and what happens is people start to branch off and become their own territory. So that's what happened here in Glenridge in 1895 and they created their own community within Essex County. We just stopped by the train station which is this bridge and platform area here. There's a really cute old building at the top that is your actual you know, station where you can get your tickets and stuff. But what I just wanted to point out here in terms of geography is that way if we go up the hill is Montclair. Now Bay Street is the next stop. So in terms of your scheduling, you're one stop closer than Montclair. So you do have a faster commute. If you're looking to get in before 8 a.m., you're looking at a 31 to 36 minute commute. If you're looking to get in before 9 a.m., which most people are probably trying to get in earlier, the commute times extend a little bit. They're about 35 to 40 minutes in just because the stops end up piling up a little bit. But this is this would be your platform that you'd get on. You'd actually get on that side and go towards the train, towards the Penn Station. And you're lighter, rear right next to the gazebo so you have nice nature to enjoy while you're waiting. As always, everyone wants to know about schools, and the truth is we're really not supposed to talk about school scores, so I would encourage you to go over to niche.com or greatschools.org and see if those scores work towards what you're looking to achieve for your real estate search. Now, I can tell you what the setup is. They've got two different pre-K to second grade schools. It's a little different setup than most places where you have like pre-K, elementary, middle, and high school. It's kind of spread out a little differently. So. 
two are pre-k to kindergarten and to second grade that's linden ave and forest ave and then you have ridgewood ave which is third to sixth grade and then of course you've got Glen Ridge high school which i showed earlier that has seventh to twelfth grade so you've got a little bit of a mix in the elementary spanning out one grade and then the high school spanning down one grade from your typical middle school high school setup but again, go over to greatschools.org or niche.com if you're looking to get more into the stats and statistics. So I'm walking along doing my video and just to show you what, how nice of a place this is, I just witnessed a car turning onto Bloomfield, a very busy road, I would say. And one of the schools, which is across the street, a soccer ball came across the car actually slowed down, stopped, like used his wheel to like stop the ball, gets out, crosses the street, and then gave the ball back. Pretty amazing. Most people would just keep going as long as there was no safety concerns. But that, what a nice citizen that is. And just goes to show you how cool of a town this is that people would stop what they're doing, help out the kids, and go along with their day. So without further ado, let's keep going and check out more about Glen Ridge. In terms of recreation, in addition to the beautiful stream and, and brook over there and the gazebo, you've also got really nice places like the high school football field here. There's a beautiful track that you can run around. There's also got the baseball field on that side. Some really beautiful seating. We're right behind the arcade and just a great place. You can see a lot of people that are adults just enjoying this outdoor space on a beautiful day like today and taking advantage of the track. Of course, Bloomfield is running right behind us. So. Lots of things to do here in Glen Ridge. One thing you'll for sure notice when you're walking around Glen Ridge is the beautiful architecture from all different eras. For instance, you have the Women's Club of Glen Ridge behind me, this beautiful brick building with slate. Like I mentioned before, the train station is a really pretty building, nice post office. The library is beautiful. Behind me is the high school, which is more of a modern building, but it still has a stature to it. And I love how it kind of folds with the landscape, just kind of like with these long pieces that sort of glide down the landscape. And stick around to the end because we got a really special piece of architecture coming up to talk about. And it's something very unique to the area. There's only four of them, or there were only four of them in New Jersey, and now not, not even that many. So we'll talk about that at the end of the video, so stick around until then. Uh, the other piece I wanted to mention was the library, which we're gonna head over and show you. That's also a really beautiful building. Of course, the homes when you're driving around, especially on Ridgewood Avenue, just gorgeous. The details and the different styles really make for an eclectic location. Now, to be honest, in terms of shops and restaurants in Glen Ridge, you don't have a lot to offer. I mentioned that at the beginning. And the truth is, we're just a quarter of a mile from the downtown of Montclair, so there's plenty of stuff to do in terms of your neighbors. But one particular place that's really cool and has a quaint old school vibe is, of course, the Glen Ridge Arcade. You've got really cute little shops in there, wine store, Italian, nails, karate, stuff to do. But that is kind of your only little spot. You know, you've got the little deli and so on, so and the cleaners, so you can get some things done, but your bulk items are definitely gonna be in Montclair or Bloomfield. Now, in terms of shopping centers, you've got the Whole Foods up in Montclair, and you've got the downtown Bloomfield area that has a couple other shopping centers. In terms of restaurants, again, not too many, but I also want to recommend Fitzgerald's 1928 Tavern, which is just around the corner. We'll go check that out in a second. But like I said, you've got so much stuff in the neighboring towns that it almost doesn't matter. I mean, we're, you know, we live in a sort of borderless society, so you're not hemmed into your own town. So certainly go up to Church Street and enjoy those places and really get to know the area and enjoy the cuisine up there. In terms of real estate, Glen Ridge is one of the more competitive markets. It's very much like Montclair, very sought after, and you have a little bit of a 
issue with bidding because you're always gonna have to go over asking in this town. I spoke with one person recently who was trying to buy here, ended up buying in Summit. They made 11 offers and were unsuccessful. But that's not, again, that's not to deter you. Just have to strategize about what's going on here. So let's give you an overview of sort of the price range. Now, there was a couple studios that traded for about 200,000. One bedrooms traded for the low 200s as well. Getting into two bedrooms, we started to get into the mid 400s. Then three bedrooms where you're starting to get into actual houses. You're at 707 on average. Four bedrooms, 975 on average. And five bedroom plus 1.425. Again, those are just averages. Let's look at the amount of deals. There's only 110 deals done in the last 12 months. And average 20 days on market. So when you think about contracts and all that stuff, getting out of return, attorney review, that's super fast. The average sale to list price, this is where you're gonna get hit over the head, 123% in the last 12 months. When you look at the last six months, there's only 110%, but again, that's kind of anecdotal, just happened to be the sample that occurred. So that's what money is gonna buy you here in Glenridge. But again, look at the beautiful homes you have as neighbors, pretty unbelievable. couple recent comps to give you some more anecdotal examples and we'll drive by these to show you the homes. Starting out at the smaller end, we've got 79 Willow Street listed for 629. It went for 855, so 136% sale to list price. It was a four bed, one and a half bath on 50 by 100 feet, 1936 build. Another one that was a little bit bigger, four bed, two bath, one half bath. This was at 14 Evergreen Court. And that one went for 779. Well, that was the asking price, 779. So 119% sale to list price. Similar size lot and built in 1978. Only 13 days on market for both of those. Going a little bit bigger down the street, 155 Ridgewood Ave was a five bed, three full bath, one half bath, 100 by 131 foot, built in 1926, Tudor Colonial. This one was listed for 125 and it sold for 13. So that one was a little bit better of a deal, only 104% over asking price and seven days on the market. So extremely fast, but I mean, look at, like I said, look at your neighbors, beautiful stuff. And right next to really cute schools, and this again is Ridgewood going sort of the central artery north to south in between Montclair and Bloomfield. So to summarize, Glen Ridge is a really idyllic, beautiful small town to call home. 7,700 people and less than two square miles, but you've got those beautiful, nice amenities nearby in Montclair and really all of Essex County combined. You've got beautiful places like Turtleback Zoo, and the Eagle Rock Reservation, stuff like that to check out. Now, I hope you enjoyed the tour, but as I mentioned earlier, the architecture here is stunning, but I've got another architectural gem to show you in the next video. It's actually a Frank Lloyd Wright home. You're not gonna wanna miss this stunning restoration. Now, it's not for sale, but the owner was generous enough to let us tour the home and share it with you. I'm gonna link it right here and see you over in the next video.